Hello, welcome back to my second video in the series dealing with preparing for the PASL exam, the PASL assessment. Um, the first one kind of laid out just what a PASL, the PASL assessment is kind of about, but today we're going to focus on task one. I think I'm going to uh, break it into another video, I add one more video to it, but this video is going to cover some of the, it's going to give you the lay of the land of what is task one, what's it cover. Um, and then what I kind of use for to address task one, what 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 um, problem I solve, and then the second video for task one would be would be us di dissecting one of the library of examples that they have. I think that would be um, better than to link that into this video. That make it way too long. So let's go into this. So um, we're going to talk about the overviews that are provided. There's a PASL overview that covers the entirety of all three tasks and all the information about PASLs. And for each task, there's an overview also that you can kind of get like a one page for. We talked about that in the last video. <clears throat> so on that one page or on this overview, it talks about all the requirements for each for that particular task. And, it, and there's a, also a place where you can go and access the, the rubrics. Like I said, there's also uh, the library of examples, but I'm going to go into that more next um, video. So what is task number one? Covering is covering solving a problem in the field. Uh, it is really the idea of conducting research. <laughs> um, my background is, is science, so I, and I was a researcher, so I, I love problem solving stuff. I love this. This is me all day long. But essentially, you are taking multiple sources of data, um, quantitative, qualitative, all kinds of data that is at the ready on your campus and you're trying to figure out one problem that you can attempt to solve and address and 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 come up with some kind of plan and implement it and all that that's all this is so it's a great it's, it's what it's what engineers do the engineers find problems and they try to solve the problems it's what scientists do scientists create problems a lot of times but but they're all trying to solve a problem so you are at this this is the science of um leading so um, so it's three different things we're going to focus on the past, the overviews, the rubric and the library examples. So like I said before, there's a generic PASL overview that goes through all the tasks and all the different ins and outs of the PASL process. There's a PDF form and that gives you, you know, if you just want as much, if you want as much information as possible, you can ex always access that. But for each task, there is an individual task overview that talks about the requirements. Um, for task number one, there is a cap, a character cap. You can only um, type 25,500 characters. In fact, if you ex you can't exceed it. So once you reach that that um, cap, I did this, um, not on this task, but on another task, it won't let you type anything. So you have to kind of go back and you have to kind of um, be very succinct and concise in, in your answers, yet it still be descriptive <laughs> and detailed. So it's, it's, it's a little, you know, balance that you have to have to um, have to create. I will say this, if you're writing, be as detailed as possible. You can always go back and take out if you reach that cap. That's what I did. <clears throat> um, but it equates to about eight pages. So this is, it's, it's a good amount of, um, uh, writing. Um, like I said before, when I first heard that we had to do this portfolio in addition to the actual test, I felt so overwhelmed because I was like, ah, because I was one is like five years of me in school, um, getting these various masters, and then I had to do this also. It's like it was craziness, and I was exhausted. And I thought it was going to be like an essay format, but it's not. Like I said before, it's a question. I, I I view it as a question and answering session, and the way they do it is there's four different steps for each one of the the tests, except I think the. The fifth one has, I think, five, or the third one has five steps. But and what they do is they break down the steps into um, text boxes. So some of the steps they have one text box, but some of the steps you have two text boxes for. And then they have a prompt, a guiding prompt that's asking a question, and you're trying to solve the question. They give you provide you kind of prompts to help you solve the question that they're um, that they're addressing here. Okay, that that is uh, covered in that step. Um, and then totaling for the entirety of the task one, you have about seven artifacts that you have to attach. And the artifacts are varied. I have kind of um, some information down here about the artifacts. Is um, 
like some longitudinal data. Um, they have, uh, they want your research. Where, where are you getting your research and stuff from? Because remember, at the end of the day, this is a problem and you have to do research. It's like, you're a scientist. Um, what are your pages, your plan, uh, a few pages from your plan, your timeline, how you're communicating with stakeholders. This is like, this could be emails or flyers and stuff like that. Um, artifacts, um, it's a representative page on an artifact of your choice that represents, so anything that is pertinent to your, how you're addressing your stakeholders and then your student work. This will requires, um, some student work. So remember I said that permission forms are, are, are you should get permission forms for anything that. Uh, from any work from a student or any work from a, um, a colleague, just automatically have them sign a permission uh, form. Okay, so those are some of the artifacts. Now, the rubric, every task has a rubric. Um, click. <laughs> there you go. So the rubric has like three different, four different levels. Now, when I look at rubric, I jump to what's the maximum score. So whatever the level with the maximum score, so in this case, is a score of four. And I then I look, I always look and read through what the rubric says, and we'll, we'll do this. Um, but then I look at the previous level, and I look to see, I compare and contrast, and I try to find what differentiates the fourth level, or that level that they, they attain, the level I want to attain from the previous level. And then this is what I noted in this with respect to task one. They focus on the evidence and they focus on the plan. And the different, the, the vocabulary or the verbs that are different from plan three to plan four, plan four talks about the evidence being extensive, the evidence being insightful, the evidence being significant, the evidence being thorough, the evidence being tightly connected throughout the response. So the evidence is your artifacts and it's also your commentary that is, um, justifying or um yeah justifying your claim so you have to make sure that you are very insightful in, in what you're presenting the plan itself has to also be extensive it should be substantive it can't be it can't be um superficial it needs to be thoroughly thought out it needs to be detailed and it has to be in depth there's a difference between a shoddy plan and there's a difference between a well thought out plan. It doesn't mean that it's going to work. It just means that you put some thought into it. Uh, you've involved some other people in the plan. And we know the difference. We, we who've been in education, we can tell when the plan is just like they just thought of it the day before and they rolled out. That's not what they're looking for here. And remember, this, this assessment costs a lot of money. Do not pro, uh, produce shoddy work or try to push shoddy work off on this assessment. Do your best, make sure your plans are a thorough and um, well thought out, and that's what you sell to these the graders of, the, of this assessment, okay? Last but not least, the library of examples, they have um, for each task and each step, actually for each text box, they have uh, two examples. They have an example of what one a person who met or exceeded the standard, and they have an example of someone who did not meet the standard. I kind of like this. And I, as I said in the last video, I, I like reading these because I realized people don't write that well these days. <laughs> and when I was reading them, I was like, well, if this is one that met or exceeded standards, uh, the, the level, that means their writing is not that great. So I just have to make sure that I just kind of explain myself. It's literally like a question and answer. Be as thorough in my explaining explanation as possible because they're not looking for you to be poets and um you know you're not keats i, I don't know why i thought of keats but <laughs> i'm reading stephen king not stephen king you don't have to be those people you don't have to be a novelist all you have to do is just be able to make a claim provide your evidence clearly explain your evidence and then um kind of merge it together and make sure that you can kind of uh, solidify everything it's, it's it's not it's not as hard as we make it we make it okay but these are the main things that we um, that I focused on when I went and um, and started preparing for the Passel Task One. So I'm going to go to the website. Remember, I can never remember the actual website. I know it's through ETS. So all I do is put Passel in the search engine, and it's going to bring it up. It's typically the first one that comes up. So the sources. This for today, our purposes today, 
these are the things that we're going to uh oh who moved okay it messed me up that's not this is not the correct thing i want to go back clear screen there you go um this <laughs> task requirements prepare in buildings and submitting your tasks these are the areas in which we will focus on because this is this is where your information about your writing and all that and and you can go from one to the next because they just kind of go it's the same information some of them have some more thorough information um so right now we're going to go to task requirements and on this page, tax requirements, you will find right here, you'll find, your, like I said the previous time, your, hand, your handbook is here. You'll find your overview, pass an overview document. That's a PDF I said I mentioned that has all of the information on it. And then for each task one, task two, task three, it's going to have um, task one requirements. And then it's gonna, these are your one pages. And then it has a task one rubric, task two requirements, task two rubric, task three, so so forth. But let's click on this overview, pass overview real quick. <clears throat> the pass overview provides a lot of key information. Okay, so here's the pass uh, overview. And uh, like I said, it provides a whole bunch of key information. I'm gonna scroll down, okay. I have to just catch up a little bit. <clears throat> so the first thing the the pastel overview does it kind of gives you generically what what it contains. So here it talks about the focus statement. So every time they introduce the next uh, task, they give you a focus statement, just that information and the standards that are aligned to that. And then um, it, I guess this was used as uh, for in the presentation. I don't read that over there. But for the task number one, problem solving the field. You will be demonstrate your ability to address and resolve a significant problem challenge in your school that influences instructional practice and student learning. I cannot emphasize to you enough that the key thing that you have to make sure you always focus on is um, is instructional practice and student learning. At the end of the day, those are the, the main things. If everything that you write, everything, every the the view, the lens that you need to be viewing through things through is how does it impact instructional practice, which is instruction in the classroom, how teachers are delivering instruction, and how does it impact student learning? Those are the two things. At the end of the day, that's what we're here to, to address. So remember that. So then it goes and it talks about the steps. Remember, I said there are four steps in task one. There's step one, step two, step three, step four. But each step is broken down in text and, and text boxes. It literally is a rectangle that you just type in. <laughs> I like that because, like I said, it kind of gives me a question and then I can answer it. So you will have, like in this one, uh, the, the identifying problem, you just that's one text box. The step two has two text boxes because of researching the plan and then the developing the plan. Um, step three has two text boxes because it's what are the strategies for your plan and then how, what's your analysis of the plan and then this last one has this one so it's, it's, it, it makes sense how they break it up i think this is well done i really have to applaud um ets for how they structure this this tedious <laughs> exhausting <laughs> um project <laughs> okay so here this is like the loop the the rubric every one of the rubric is going to look essentially like this and remember i said it has a score from one to four i only 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 i promise you i only focus on um score number four because i don't care about the rest um, i'm trying to get the highest score that I, I that's available if i fall and here's why here's why i focus on the highest because if by chance I fall short of it, I still got a three. And three is really the what you need, you know, to, to pass this assessment. Okay. So don't shoot for a three because this is, you know, when you shoot for a three, you, if you don't get the three, you get to a two and you flunk this. Same thing for the, um, like the um, star assessment. I hate when people say, oh, you only need 51 questions to pass or 21 questions to pass. And you tell that to the students. Well, they're going to only look for 21. And then if they don't get the 21, they got less than 21. So you should always shoot for the, the stars and not the moon. Okay. So got my I can get off my um soapbox right now. <laughs> so then it breaks it down into activities. 
these activities are like the this where the text boxes are the steps in the text boxes. So I'm gonna fast forward and go through and 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 it has like um, the steps and stuff and and then guiding prompts. I'm gonna go down though and I want to get down to the actual task one. Okay, so here we are on task one. I don't know what page this is, but uh, we're on task one. What page is this? Sorry, I can't tell what page it is. But anyway, um, and it has the four different steps. Identify the problem, develop a plan, implement the plan, reflect. At the end of the day, they want you to reflect. They actually have kind of reflection points throughout the whole thing. But So it gives you the steps. It gives you the artifacts that we just discussed. It tells you the maximum amount of pages you can have provide for any artifact and where they are located within the, um, within the writing. <clears throat> um it talks about the character count well okay so i didn't talk about this for every one of the tasks it's going to be a contextual information um that's needed to be provided beforehand i'm not going to talk about that until after i talk about all the tasks because that's what i did i didn't even touch them until i i finished my task so i'll come back and talk about this in a later video okay um and then it goes into the activities for text box one okay so Text box one, I mean, step one deals with identifying the problem. And the activity is in collaboration with your supervising building administrator, identify one significant problem connected to the school and or school community. And then you do these things. So you have to identify something in collaboration. But when they say collaboration, you still have to be point person. Remember that. It can't be that you're just in, in um, executing someone else's plan. It has to be a plan that you helped to develop, like you were significantly involved in the development of it. Um, so you have to do this with that plan. You have to describe the impact that the problem has on instructional practice and student learning. Remember, at the end of the day, those two things are the key. Um, use and explain how longitudinal data support your choice. So they say longitudinal data because longitudinal means within that year, typically, or um, it's, it's variations in how you can look at longitudinal data, but it's within that kind of like a year. But you can you all um, you can also have it with longitudinal data can be specific to a, a one grade level, like you follow in that grade level. But anyway, just data. Um, describe the the expected result if the problem challenge is addressed and how the cha change will affect instructional practice and student learning. Once again, we go back to how this is going to affect the student instructional practice. How is it affecting student learning? So those are the overall arches of what you're trying to accomplish in this, what you're going to write. But to help you out, they provide these guiding prompts. I love these guiding prompts. And I like this, the way they have this highlight. This is not me highlighting. They're trying to key zero you in on certain key things. Describe. So when they say this, the verb describe, you need to make sure you describe. This is like unpacking the teats one-on-one. You have to make sure whatever verb that you do, that is the action that you do in your answer, in your in your writing. Okay, you have to, you have to. That's the skill you have to use in your writing. So you're describing the significant problem challenge you selected. What's the impact of the problem uh, has on the instruction practice of student learning? Provide examples to demonstrate the impact of that problem. And this is this is. Don't get too specific at the beginning. Unless you've already done this, done this on your task and stuff, but think generalize first. What is the overall problem that is happening? And then from each guiding prompt and each uh, step, you're gonna kind of go in. You're gonna de uh, filter things out and kind of get a little bit more and more detail until you come up with the actual problem that you're going to implement. Um, so, what longitudinal data did you collect? It should be a, a plethora of data. It should not be one source or two, and it doesn't all have to be quantitative. It can be some of it can be qualitative, but you have to have some quantitative data. Never present anything that doesn't have quantitative data. Just only qualitative. Don't do that. I'm from science, and we we don't we don't respect that. <laughs> you better have some numbers somewhere. <laughs> um, why are the data Why are the data appropriate? How do the data support your choice of a significant problem or challenge? Okay, and then what result do you anticipate if the problem challenge is addressed? How will the result impact instructional practice and student learning? This, each bullet, if I were you, I will put A and I will answer that question. I will put B and answer that question. C and answer that question. I would do that. In fact, I did do that. I kind of have a... Um, I, I saved my 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 writings and stuff, but I literally uh, in, in in a in a Google uh, doc. But I literally just approached it as 
answer the first thing. So this is how I was. So A was answered. Here's my B. I answered the B. I thoroughly answered it. And I went and answered C. So I did that for each one of my um of these prompts that they gave me. I answered the prompt. If you do that, it no longer feels like an essay. It's just question and answering. Okay. It really is very easy peasy. And then it tells you what artifact has to be um provided in here. I'm gonna go back up to where it talks about artifacts at the top of this this passive overview. Now, not only do you have to provide an artifact, you have to reference the artifact in your writing. So here's an example of how they reference an artifact. It's, they're talking about something, I'm not gonna read all that, but I'm gonna go to the, the highlight, which is uh, students are gaining a proficiency in sight word recognition and phon phonemic uh, awareness, which is evidence in the student work sample. So it tells you, it's, it's, it's saying, you're saying something, you're talking about something, and then you say, here's where I reference that. And then what you do, when every time, anytime you have a graphic or something, um, um, yeah, a graphic represent, a graphical representation, data, or anything like that, you should always have like a, um, a blurb of what they should be seeing. And so what follows this reference will be what should they see in this, 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 this artifact that you provided. Okay, so preliminary data indicates that. Blah, 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 blah. So you reference it. There's a way that you link it. It's just links. You just go through the instructions. They'll show you how to do it. You link it, and then you explain to them what they should be seeing. That's how you do data. That's how you, um, um, whenever you have graphic graphical information or data or anything like that, you should always do that as a um, way of having people see what you want them to see, okay? So, And here they actually provide an example of an artifact. This looks like something they were, I don't know what this is, um, some assessment they gave them, the student. And this, it, it, see how it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be formal or anything. It's just, this is what you use. So you want to be authentic in this, um, your problems. In all three of these tests, whatever you use, put, put that out there. Um, so this is the assessment. I mean, this is the artifact. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the website and I'm going to click on the one pager here. So task one, task one requirements PDF. And what you find is pretty much the same information um, that you found in the overview. But it's only this task. So problem solving one, I got the artifacts, got some key information. Um, and then it breaks, uh, I'm going to come back to contextual information. Then it breaks down the activities, um, the step one activities, prompts, and it has, it simulates the box. So I like, like I said, it, I, this makes, the box makes me, I don't know why it's not, it's not intimidating and I can, I can write all day in a box. <laughs> um, and then um, it just does that for each one of the steps. And, and, and that's it. So if you just want to focus in on one task, you can go to that particular task and go to um, task one requirements, task two requirements, right? Now let's go to the, the rubric. <clears throat> okay, so here is task one's rubric. I hate that they have all this bolded. I cannot stand how people put everything bolded. How, if everything's bolded, how do I my eyes zero in on anything? Just... Uh, Formatting is, is really off to me. So I don't look at score one, I look at score four. Because really I'm going to compare and contrast these these two scores. Score one, score, uh, score three, and score four, okay? Um, now, what I'm looking for are keywords. I see effective here, but I see extensive here. So I see, and everything else seems to be the same. So a response at the level four provides extensive evidence versus effective evidence. This one, part two, was was partial, and part one was minimal. So those differences, those little, and this is, I hate it because it's it's like an English assessment <laughs> because it's really. Um, based on the whoever's reading it but you can tell when something is extensive like it's almost extensive implies an abundance of it not just being perfunctory and not partial it is extensive so your evidence needs to be extensive 
um, that demonstrates a school leader's candidate's ability to identify a significant problem. So your ability to do this, to collect, and everything else seems to be the same. So let's go up. So now, um, looking at three and four again. <laughs> Let's look for the keywords. So you can pause your video and then look for the keywords. So I see appropriate here and I see insightful here. And I like that at least even though they bolded everything, they did uh, <laughs> italicize some, some the, the words that are different. Um, and then they both have connected, so that's not different, but it's different from here. So this one has appropriate, has insightful. This one has limited, and this one has minimal. Score one is minimal. Don't be a score one. <laughs> and if you notice, connected is here in both three and four, but it's not connected here. So they have vague instead. So what are we talking about? So the preponderance of evidence, preponderance of evidence, this is a, like a legal term, for the three, uh, for the for the four level criteria is insightful, and three is just appropriate. Insightful has vision, and tightly connected throughout the response of step one. So everything has, so everything is fluid and everything is connected. Okay, and when you go down here again, it says insightful again. It says appropriate again. Response provides uh, evidence that includes the following, an insightful selection of significant problem solving challenge uh, that impacts um, instructional practice and student learning with significant versus effective, significant versus effective. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, I don't know how to change that, so that's going to stay like that. Okay. Um, and then examples tightly linked to the impact. So that there, there you go. Nest for text box number one. Okay. Um, and then let's go down. Still for continue for text box number one. Looking at three. Looking at four. What do you notice? Extensive versus appropriate again. Extensive is above and beyond. Insightful versus relevant relevant is to the point but insightful is not just to the point but you have vision you need to be able to see like a chess player see like two or three steps ahead of you significant versus appropriate so all these things matter so go back look at the rubric what needs to be what's the difference between an extensive use of longitudinal data. So your use of data is extensive, collected to support the choice of significant problem solving, a problem challenge. And insightful identification of the anticipated results. Not just identifying the results, but you're insightful. You're actually keying in on your third eye <laughs> to see further down a way um, what the results can potentially be. Not just one result, but how does it, how does it impact multiple things, okay? Um, and it's with a significant identification of the anticipated impact of instructional practice and at the end of the day is about instruction and student learning. So that's text box one. Now you're going to go through and you're going to do it throughout the entire rubric. I'm not going to do this with you. This is your homework. And because you're making sure before you start writing that you're writing that that's in a way that is going to give you the greatest, the greatest bang for your buck. You don't want to have to do this process again. It's expensive and it's tedious. So try your best to know ahead of ahead of the time what's expected of you. So that's the rubric. Okay. So I'm gonna go back. So what did I do? Because <clears throat> the problem of solving in the field could be anything. We got all kinds of problems in education. This <laughs> is getting this more. It's more coming. Um, so what did I do? I chose to. Um, to do to focus on a campus-wide math intervention plan that was conducted during our advisory time, like a um, homeroom time, to mitigate learning loss due to COVID pandemic. This is a real thing. It was a real issue. Everyone nationwide, uh, other nations are are have been impacted by COVID. There has been issues with regard to. Um, so this is what I covered. I covered that, and I did it in steps. 
I, I discuss the stuff by identifying the problem, researching the plan, implementing the plan, and then um, reflecting. Now, my next video, I'm going to cover, go into this, what my plan was, and look at some what they provide. I hope this helps.